Hello, 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 and good evening. Um, on tonight's Omer Vision tutorial for Unity, I am going to do another shader graph. Um, the first time I played around with um, playing around with the normal to do a water effect, and this time I'm going to play around with a shader graphs, the um, textures position that's going to actually offset the the um, pixels in a texture. A textured mesh and um, and a shaded mesh and actually do an effect like this like water so right here I just put on the shaded wireframe so you could see like the wireframe model here of the the plane and how when it's um, applying this shader here it's gonna actually move the the vertices up and down and this is the result you get so this is the plane with the mesh on it and I can also do a plane without the mesh to show you just what's going on here. Um, here's a second plane that I'm adding in. Let me just go back to shaded wireframe. Okay, and let me just hide this first one. So I start off with a mesh like this and with the shader that was built here. This is the um, shader graph method for building shaders. I was able to get a shader. And I made a material that used the shader. And then the material, I could drag it on to an object and voila, it starts flapping in the wind. So this is what we're going to learn how to do tonight. Uh, let's get started by opening up a brand new Unity project. Okay, so let me just move these guys out of the way. And open up Unity Hub and do a new one here a new shader graph tutorial from a new project so we all could start from the same place and this one i'll call it the flutter shader okay and it has to be a 3d project and then i'll say create project and I'll wait for it to create okay so our brand new 3d project opened up and we're ready to start to make this shader. We need two things from the package manager. So we're gonna to go to the package manager here from window package manager. And we're gonna make sure that we have, um, these are preview packages. They're not released yet. We're gonna make sure that we have shader graph. I'm using Unity 2018.3 over here. So I'm gonna install the shader graph. This is what lets us make shaders using graphs and nodes instead of having the right code for it. And it's installing. Okay, so shader graph installed. And the other thing I'm gonna need is a render pipeline. And right next to shader graph here is the lightweight render pipeline. I'm gonna install All right, so now that's installed. All the packages that are installed with the package manager, they show up over here in my project in the packages folder. And you can see by default when this project was created, it has um, a number of other packages that I don't need. So if I wanna make my um, Unity project smaller, when I compile it, I could just remove some of these packages and disk space if I don't wanna use them. So I could just go through and click each one of these and remove. Okay. Clean things up. And this is just a tutorial. I'm not gonna do any in-app purchasing. Remove. And what else do we have? Um, this is the package manager UI. I need that. Text Mesh Pro. Not going to be making any menus and UI stuff, so I can leave that out. And you need to collaborate. Where are you? I'm going to take you out too because I'm working by myself on this tutorial. All right, so I should just have two packages left. Well, three the lightweight render pipeline and the shader graph. So to start off with in the scene, I'm going to add in a plane just like I had before okay 
And the reason I'm using a plane instead of a quad is because I have a lot of vertices in this. If I just change to the shaded wireframe um, view in the scene window, you can see that there's all these triangles here, all these points. Those are vertices that I could actually control and move up and down. So I'm using the plane object to do the shader graph tutorial. Now the other thing I need to do here is I need to create a um, a lightweight render pipeline asset over here and I'll just call it lightweight render pipeline LRP all right and then the lightweight render pipeline I have to use it as the um, pipeline that's being used for this project so that is in project settings and yep here we are graphics and right here at the top to see if I'm using a render pipeline pipeline and I am so I'll have it use the lightweight render pipeline because I need to do that for the shader graphs to work okay and I have a plane I have that I need to make a shader so let's go over here and create um, where are you shader rendering oh come on all right alphabetical here we go or maybe I'm just in the wrong place. How have I gone blind that I don't know where this is? Shader. Try that again. Right click, create. And shader is right there. Gosh. All right. So with the shader graph installed, this these are the three shader graph things that I'm using. PBR graph. And, and then I'll just call this my shader, my flutter shader. That's the effect we're going to try to do. Flutter shader, and then the shader is going to have to be applied to a material. So let's create a material. Good, I found that one. Flutter material. Okay. And then right off the back, let's just put the shader onto the material. And then let's put the material onto the plane. Okay, so now when we start playing around with the shader, um, the connections are already made to our plane object. Let me just see the scene. Now we're going to open up the shader for the first time here. And it has a window that is dockable, but, you know, it's really hard to work with this when it's um, docked because I find that I need a lot of space for the shader just to be able to read it. So I'm going to have two windows open here, the shader window and the unity window, and I'll, you know, jump back and forth between the two. Um, I'll move the shader window over. I forgot one thing. In order to see our effect better, I do have a texture that I want to apply. So there, I just drag and drop the texture into my project, checkerboard. Okay. And here's a shader. So as we see, this is the master. These are all the things that we could do for the um for the shader like and this is the one we want to play around with here position so first let's start off by creating a position node and i just type, start typing pos and here i get a position node and to try to save space i'll just chunk that up and the output from the position node i want it to go to position and it did go to position without any problem, but no. I'm going to have to share this with a split node because um, part of the position of the, the shader rendering is going to come from the world. And so from this, I'm just going to input to here. And then from my split, I'm going to take the R and the B uh, I need another thing here from the split. I need a, a position as three X, Y, and Z. So I need a, um, a vector three, create node vector three. All right, so the R is gonna take care of the X and I'll just say the B will take care of the Z. And then the Y, which will be like the, if, if we look at our object here, the Y axis over here is gonna be the up and down, okay? That's going to take care of the Y. And that's going to come from something else. So let's just drag and drop that to position. And let me just save the asset. 
and see what happened here. Nothing really, but let me let me adjust the camera here with Control Shift F there so that they kind of match up. Okay, it did do some kind of shift here because this orange outline is where the object is, but um, already with this position thing, it moved the object over from its natural position. You see the outline, it kind of shifted it over. Uh, but I'll worry about that, more about that in a moment. I want to be able to map my texture to the object. So let me just create a texture node, texture 2D asset. And in here I could specify my texture was the checkerboard and put that as the albedo. And it wants something. It wants, a, oh, I think it wants a sample texture node to do the conversion. And where do you go? Right back there. There you go. And then from the sample texture node, I can go to the albedo. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so the texture is going to become that. And the texture, I guess I wanted a, oops, sorry guys. The texture, I guess I wanted a property that we could set in the inspector window. So I'm just going to say convert to property for that. And I'll name this property texture. Okay, so that property will show in the inspector. Let me save that. And then oh, I have to like just move over here and in the plane. Now here is the flutter material and yeah, you could see it wants a uh, texture. So here I could specify the checkerboard and there we go. Now we got the checkerboard there. It's our first property. Yay, we got one property working. All right, so let me put this down here. This is the texture, and that's kind of taken care of really quickly. Let me put this up here instead. I'm gonna have to get this Y input that goes on to move things up and down from somewhere. I'm gonna have to get a Y input. So what I plan to do is get a Y input from like some noise. So I want some nice smooth noise. So let me see, let me type noise and we got sine wave and we got gradient noise. We'll try that one. Okay. And then the noise has a scale. So we don't have that many vertices here. I kind of had the other one set down to not 310 to three. I had it down to three. And then the output from the noise, I want it to go to the Y. Can I just go right there to the Y? Yes, I could. And voila, there is an effect. Um, let's see how that looks. Let me just save the asset and this is going to freak out. Uh, okay, good. So that is happening there. Now I just need something to control this noise so it's moving, so it's animated. So usually we got to use time for that since time is always moving and changing. And doo -doo -doo -doo, we're going to control the UV. So I need a tiling and an offset. There we go. All right, so we could see these things. Just move over a little bit. So the tiling in the offset is going to output to the UV. But don't. And time, here we have, um, there's two values here. We're going to change the offset here of the tiling. And there's two values, so I need a to convert the time to vector two. Um, and I'm going to have that go to the offset. Okay. And now what I did in my thing for two different times, one for the X and one for the Y, I just use sine and cosine since they're the opposite of each other. 
if you know about trigonometry. See, so there's the sine which goes back and forth like this. And if I save the asset, then I can see how that looks over here. That sine which goes back and then forth. And then for the y, I just use cosine. And that goes the other way. So now this is kind of like the timing and offset is kind of doing like a circular rotation. And that's applying to the gradient noise, which is doing like a circular you know, offsetting of the noise. And then we save that. And we see how that looks in the scene. Move over here. And that's how I have my texture. Now, let me just see about this offset thing that happened. How it shifted over. And why? What happens if I take this off? Save asset. Oh, can't do that. I'm going to take it from a different. Save asset. Mm -hmm. Nope, it has to be, it wants to be the B to go to the Z. All right, so file save. Oh no, sorry. Save asset. And let me just take one last look at this. So that's basically my fluttering water. And uh, I guess I could try to control some of the parameters here. Like, let's see what happens if I play with tiling. I take it down to 0.5 and 0.5. I think that just, see how it just changed the gradient to less, it's like a little smoother. I think that's what that does. So I could use that as a parameter. Let me make a new one here, vector two for two values. And by default, I'll leave it at one and one. Okay. And we'll call this like the um, smoothness, flutter smooth. Flutter smoothness. Okay. And we'll have that as an input parameter here for the tiling since that's what it kind of changes the look and feel of. And save that. And now flutter smoothness by default is a one and a one. And if I look in here at my yeah, you see here, flutter smoothness, a one and a one. I don't know why it puts a Z and a W in there when I set a vector two, I guess. It's still in development, so, you know, what can we say? So that works there to control that. What else could we control? Um, the scale, that could be one thing here. That's a vector one, so we could add a vector one for the um, flutter scale. And right there, the default is three. So let's just have that as three. And then drag and drop that over here and have that be controllable as a shade thing. All right, and save asset. So now if I look over here, I have flutter scale and it's a three. And if I increase it, then you see it's more ripply. And if I decrease it, that's another way it kind of makes smooth waves smooth out. The, you know what? This this could be used on my um, other shader, the wave shader, to really make the waves look good. And anything else we want to play with? Anything else we want to play with? I don't know. But um, basically, this is my flutter shader where I'm changing the position using um, noise. And then to move the noise around, I just attach to, I'm using time. And uh, what I do is I affect the position here with time, and that affects the Y position, and you get that flutter effect. Well, that, that makes everything simply explained, and there's the um, shader graph for your viewing pleasure. So I'll try to put it up on the screen here so you could copy it. And 
There you go. Have fun. I'll try to come up with some more because I'm, I'm liking Shader Graph. Later.